This is silicon, a non-metallic chemical element in the carbon family which makes up to 27.7% of Earth's crust. It is the second most abundant element in the crust, being only surpassed by oxygen. And since silicon is in the talks, how can the audience, fanboys and the sci-fi lovers forget about the phenomena called silicon-based life? Of course, we saw Star Trek as children where there's a silicon-based life form from Janus which eats through rock like we walk through air. There's also a great Marvel character, the Sandman, who can transform into glass and back and can manipulate the Earth. A marvelous ability. But is silicon-based life restricted to the realms of sci-fi only? Let's understand. The idea appears to be broadly based on silicon's apparent similarity to carbon. Silicon is close to carbon in the periodic table. It has the valence of 4, which is same as carbon. So each atom could, in principle, form bonds with other 4 atoms and could also therefore apparently be a building block just like carbon. And also one might think that it might also make similar structures. It is also widely available in the biosphere as that potential building block in quantity. However, there is the catch. Life is driven by some form of energy source or sources and needs an agent and processes to release and use the energy available in its energy source. For life to survive, the agents must be universally and continuously available in quantity and b a replenishing not a diminishing resource. In our environment, we have oxygen available to be that agent and during cellular respiration glucose is broken down producing CO2 and H2O and energy is released. One could go on about ATP and O2, CO2 various cycles and so on but that's not the main point here really. The main point is that for life as we know, when carbon reacts with oxygen, it can form gases, for example carbon dioxide and water, both of which are easily eliminated from a carbon-based organism in the process of its metabolism. In comparison, when silicon reacts with oxygen, it forms a stable litis which is then not possible to easily eliminate from the organism, if the organism did indeed exist, and so silicon-based life form would not be able to get rid of the waste products arising from its own metabolism. It would therefore be a severely self-limiting life form. And that's all ignoring the impossibility of the necessary oxygen replenishment processes and other various cycles required for sustaining the silicon-based life if there is no CO2 and water release and from which we benefit with carbon-based life. However, the overall summary of all this is that the energy released from a hypothetical silicon-based life form is a massively problematic theoretical issue. But what about something we could not even imagine, never mind just contemplate existing? Thinking of the planet Earth, astronomers looking at meteoroids, comets and other planets have identified silicon dioxides and silicates, but no evidence of silicones or silines, which are the better potential chemical precursors. So at the moment, there is also no evidence of a new silicon-based life form which is outside of our experience or imagination. So there we are. Silicon-based life is peak fiction as of now, but you never know what we might discover in further future. So that's it for this video, see you in the next video, until then, stay tuned.